Tonight we continue in our devotional on divorce, and uh, as I said, we're in Matthew chapter 19 tonight, and uh, we'll be in verse 8 uh, tonight, but last week uh, in our devotional, we started talking about uh, just divorce in general and what it does uh, to, the, uh, to the relationship and to the, uh, to the people, we, and we really started off by looking at what God's view of divorce is, or uh, I guess is, because it still is his view, and we looked at it from Malachi uh, chapter 2, verse 16, and uh, we just saw that, that God is not in favor of divorce because it leads to feelings like we talked about last week, alienation, rejection, uh, bitterness, and uh, confusion, and, and some other things that we talked about, but tonight... We're going to look at uh, Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to talk tonight about the causes of divorce. And so let's go ahead and look at Matthew chapter 19. Uh, The verse that is attached to this particular devotional uh, is verse 8, but let's back up and let's start looking. Let's just start at verse 1, okay, and we'll end at verse 8. So in Matthew chapter 19, we're in verse 1. It says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They said, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, of, at the, beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let man not separate. And then here's verses 7 and 8. It says, Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. And and we'll look at uh, some more of that later in uh, this devotional series in a couple of weeks. But right there, uh, we see that Jesus is being put to the test like he was regularly, uh, more specifically by the Pharisees than anybody else. And so he's being put to the test, and they're trying to catch Jesus in a, uh, in a loophole, so to, speak, so to speak. They're trying to catch him off guard and get him to say something that is against the law of Moses so that they could get him for blasphemy and, you know, and really uh, try and discredit him. Well, Jesus, being God, knows what they're doing, and so he answers truthfully and honestly, and he answers from the Word of God, as we read about there in verses 4 through 6. We see that he's quoting from Genesis. He's quoting from Moses. And so he's uh, quoting from uh, what God says in Genesis chapter 2, basically, about uh, about marriage and about uh, divorce. And they, they push the issue. They first ask there in verse 3, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? So basically saying, is it okay no matter what the circumstances for a man to divorce his wife? That's basically what they're trying to trip him up with. That's the question that they're asking. And Jesus doesn't technically answer the question. He, he does, but he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't answer it specifically in the way that they want or like we would hope that he would or that we would want him to. Instead, Jesus says, look, this, instead of talking about divorce and why you should be divorced or why you can get divorced, let's look at what God says about marriage. And then he, he, that's basically what he says. And he, he quotes, as I said, Genesis, you know, talking about how God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man will leave his uh, father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. And so right here, you know, Jesus is saying, look, let's not be so focused on what, you know, why people are divorced or why people can be divorced. Let's look at what God says about marriage and, and staying together there. And they, they weren't satisfied with that, uh, with that answer. They, did, they wanted more. They wanted, they wanted to roast Jesus a little more, so to speak. And so they went on and they said there in verse 7, Why then did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? 
And so they're basically saying, okay, well, Moses, the greatest prophet in all of Israel, has said it's okay for us to be divorced if we, as a male, give our wife a certificate and send her away, according to the Jewish law. And he said, so they're basically saying, okay, you didn't answer our question, but let's, let's, let's try it another way. Let's ask the same question in another way. And so they say, okay, what about what Moses says? Because this is what Moses says, and you need to speak directly to what Moses says. And so Jesus then says, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, that it was not this way from the beginning. And so basically what Jesus is saying is that, yes, it was allowed. Yes, this was permitted by Moses, but it's not, again, what God wants. Going back to, you know, basically affirming what we've read already in Malachi chapter 2. Uh, how God, it says there that God hates divorce, but we see here that Jesus is basically saying, you know, that the reason that was permitted, the reason God told Moses to say, give a certificate of divorce and send them away, uh, was uh, because the hearts of the people had become hard. Not only, obviously, towards their spouse, but also towards God, that they weren't willing to do what God wanted in their particular cases. And he finishes it out there by saying, but from the beginning it was not so. Meaning that from the beginning, divorce was not a part of God's plan. God's plan for marriage was a husband and wife for a lifetime. And that's what we read about last week, and that's what we've talked about. Uh, but we also understand that things happen. Sin affects every part of life. There is no part of, let me rephrase that, sin affects every part of creation. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth uh, or a little bit more on Sunday night when we're looking at the book of Joel. Because, there's a, because of the sins of Israel, the cattle were groaning because of the sins affecting the whole of creation. And what we see is that sin affects every part of creation. It affects every aspect, not only our relationships with our spouses, not only our relationships with our children and others, our relationship with God is affected by our sin. And so sin affects every part, every dynamic of, of creation, and marriage is no substitute, or is no exemption, I guess I should say. Uh, marriage is affected by sin just as much as anything else. And so, you know, tonight we're talking about the causes of divorce, and people, get, and people choose uh, to divorce for many different reasons. And I, I tried to do a little research, and I, I kept coming back to basically eight answers as to the common reasons why people uh, give for their divorce. And here are the, uh, I guess, eight of the more uh, common reasons. And so here, here they are, and not in any particular order. This is just uh, what, uh, what I was able to find. Uh, one is lack of commitment. Another is too much arguing. Another is infidelity. Another is marrying too young. Another is unrealistic expectations. Another is lack of equality in the relationship. Another is lack of preparation for marriage. And then another is abuse. And so there are, and as I said, next week we're going to talk about uh, some of the allowances for divorce, you know, what the scriptures tell us uh, about that. But, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why people get uh, divorced. Uh, you see in the, you hear in the tabloids or in the, in the news, I guess you would say, uh, about celebrity couples that have irreconcilable differences. And that's, that's, the, that's the common answer you hear for why couples in Hollywood, anyway, are divorced. But there's a lot of different reasons. We, and I just listed some of them. Everything from infidelity and abuse to um, those irreconcilable differences on a lot of different matters. Uh, sometimes, you know, divorce does occur because the spouse is unfaithful. Uh, in other situations... Uh, the partners, uh, the, the two spouses cannot reconcile disagreements that they have and they just, it continues to build and continues to uh, fester, so to speak, and it's never addressed. And eventually uh, they become hostile towards each other. They become bitter towards each other. And what ends up happening is there is a, there is a crack in the relationship that cannot be fixed or, or is, is not fixed. 
uh, you know, many times uh, one, one partner, uh, the husband or the wife, uh, may feel that the other spouse does not meet their uh, emotional or physical needs, uh, even though the partner is faithful to the marriage. Uh, they may just totally disconnect and just totally are uh, disconnect, disconnect from the relationship, but don't leave the relationship. Uh, they're still faithful to their spouse. They're still in the household. They still provide. They still do all those things, but emotionally and physically, they have just checked out so to speak and that's one of, that's you know a, after a while what you'll see is again that fissure that that crack that chasm has developed and what ends up happening is it gets to where it is not repairable and divorce is inevitable in those situations uh, you know it all boils back down to at some point we have to realize when it comes to these causes of divorce a lot of times as we understand, the, the, re, the, the root there is, to some degree, sin. And I'm not saying that both partners sin. I'm saying that if well, there's, we can sit here and play, you know, a million different scenarios out and choose a lot of different, you know, ways that divorce has played out. But when you look at it, sin can damage relationships. And if one part of the, one of the two decides that they are going to do everything they can to fix the relationship, everything that they can to salvage the relationship, but the other one chooses not to, and they choose that they are going to continue to, to, to be bitter, to continue to not try and reconcile disagreements. They're going to continue to be unfaithful, all of these things. The sin that is in that spouse that is affecting their life is damaging the marriage relationship, and no matter how godly, no matter how much the person tries, no matter what the other spouse has in their relationship with God and how much they try to reconcile the relationship, we understand that sometimes it doesn't work out, especially when one spouse is just bent on not reconciling the relationship. And so, you know, it's, it's not one of those, divorce is not one of those things that you can um, paint it with a broad stroke, so to speak. You can't just paint it as you know, this is the way it is in every divorce because every divorce and every relationship is different. And so we, can't, we have to be very careful as, as Christians and as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ for those that may be uh, going through a divorce or uh, may be recovering from a divorce or whatever the case may be. We have to be very careful not to just paint with broad strokes and just be like, well, everyone who gets divorced, this is the reason or this is how it happened, or this is, you know, this is how we have to respond. Because every, every divorce is as unique as every marriage, and every marriage is as unique as every individual person. There's no two people alike in this world, no matter whether they're twins or triplets, or whether they've grown up together, or whatever the case may be. Every person is different because we all have different experiences in this life. And therefore, the marriage relationship between a man and a woman uh, are different in every, every situation. You know, Chuck and Amy, how long have y'all been married? 13 years. Me and Misty have been married for 14 years. Even though we've been married both basically the same amount of time, their marriage relationship is vastly different than ours. And it's the same for those of you that have been married for how many years? Wait, wait, wait. Thurman, how many years have you been married? Fifty-nine. Oh, I kind of on the spot. I couldn't even do it. But 59 years. Uh, it, you know, even if there's another couple that's been married for 50, 55, 60 years, their marriage relationship is going to be vastly unique compared to the other. And so we just have to, I guess that is, that is one of my concerns is that as teaching a devotional on divorce, Yes, the, the Billy Graham Training Center Bible has really good information that, that points to the scriptures and helps us to understand it, uh, these topics. But what we have to understand is that we have to be very careful not to just paint a broad stroke and look at divorce as constrained to this is how every divorce is and this is, this is how we are to treat every wife or uh, every woman that is divorced and every man that is divorced. We have to understand that, that sin does affect those relationships uh, between people and and because of that things like unforgiveness can destroy a marriage if we're not willing to forgive our spouse 
then what we see is that it can it can literally destroy a marriage. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I have found that at the longer Misty and I have been married, uh, the more I realize the the more I notice that we are quicker to forgive each other. Um, you know, I don't do anything wrong, but she does all sorts of stuff wrong. Uh, no. Uh, but I have noticed that, that even when I do stupid stuff, she is a lot quicker to forgive me. Or I know, I've noticed of late in, in the past several years that when, when we have an argument or, or a disagreement uh, over something, that uh, she's a type A personality and I'm a type A personality and we're going to butt heads from time to time and we're both going to be right and the other's going to be wrong. And I've, I've seen, though, that that because we've matured in our relationship from where we were almost 15 years ago, that we're quicker to forgive each other. And because of that, that unforgiveness is not being harbored by the other uh, or by either one of us. And what you see in that is that the quicker you are to forgive, that unforgiveness doesn't have a chance to fester and cause the problems that it can if we hold on to it, like bitterness and other things. Those those things will destroy and undermine and erode the foundation of a marriage relationship. And so we have to be we have to guard ourselves very carefully against that. But regardless of the re- reason for the divorce, whether it's the abuse or infidelity or the irreconcilable differences, as we've talked about already, regardless of what reason causes the divorce, both partners suffer from the broken relationship. Even if, one, even if one spouse steps outside the marriage and then never comes back, that broken relationship still has a bearing on that individual. Whether they want to admit it or not, whether they want to voice it vocally or not, it does affect them. It does have an impact on their, on their life, just like the other uh, spouse. Uh, regardless of the situation, regardless of what leads to the divorce, both people are, are scarred by it, I think is the best way to put it, because of the fact that as we read here in you know, Matthew chapter 19, it says, you know, Jesus says in verse 6, so the, yeah, in verse 6, so they are no longer two, but one. And when you put two things together and you pull them back apart, it's broken. You know, it's, you know it's, that's the way it works. If you put something together and you tear it apart, you've broken it into two pieces, so to speak. And the marriage relation is the same way. When that happens, when those two have been put together by God uh, or in front of God or uh, you know, in a marriage relationship, when, when those two are put together and then broken apart, there's damage done. There's, there is a broken relationship and both sides suffer and so both sides uh, feel the effects of it and so it's important that we that we minister to those that do go through divorce uh, and not uh, not look to cast blame not not look to cast uh, downward looks on those individuals that have went through divorce, it's important that we minister to them and understand that we don't know the ins and outs of the relationship. We know what we've been told. Uh, you know, Misty and I have some friends that, uh, that have been married for quite a while, and uh, they're not much older than we are, and uh, they've been married probably uh, 17, 18 years, and they got divorced recently, and uh, it came as a shock to us. Uh, but as always happens, there was, there was conversations that, you know, well, this is why they got divorced or no, this is why they got divorced. And regardless of why, regardless of the cause of it, regardless of what happened, Misty, uh, Misty and I had the same mindset that, you know, we weren't picking sides in this. It wasn't, it wasn't up to us to say you were in the wrong or you were in the wrong. It was up to us to minister to, or not minister to them, but to still be friends with both of them. And so we've, had, we've done our best to try and uh, still have a good relationship with both of them without casting blame, without trying to uh, you know, do those things that we so often hear about in those situations. Regardless of the cause of the divorce, we as Christians still need to, uh, need to minister 
uh, to those that uh, go through divorce and are affected by it. Because, uh, you know, in this case of our friends, uh, they've got kids, um, kids that are similar in age to our boys. And so, uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard when you hear your one of your boys come to you and say, I've been talking with my friend because his parents have gotten divorced and I've tried to be a, you know, a good friend to him. And to know that me and Misty have basically tried to do the same thing with that kid's parents. And so it's, uh, it's challenging when we see those people that are uh, going through a divorce. We need to continue to minister to them regardless of what the cause is. Regardless of it, if it was a blatant infidelity or whether it was just uh, disagreements that they had that they just couldn't come to terms with and ended up uh, divorcing. And so uh, we, need to, we need to see it as an opportunity to minister to them above all else. It's an opportunity to, for us to show them the love of Christ in a time where they are hurting. Even if they don't admit it, even if they won't uh, tell you that they're hurting, they are suffering as a, as a part of this broken relationship. And it's our responsibility to, to minister to them and to uh, care for them and to do what we can to support them uh, during that uh, during that loss of a relationship there, uh, but uh, as always, I'm going. You know, I told you last week that I'm going to end each week uh, basically giving the same uh, uh, public service announcement. I don't know any other way to put it, but if you and your spouse, or you know of someone and their spouse who are struggling and contemplating divorce, and it's something that they're talking about or something that you're thinking about. Um, Let's sit down and talk. Uh, and again, if they or you don't feel comfortable <clears throat> sitting down and talking with me, there are other uh, Christian counseling options in our community uh, that do not cost anything, and I can uh, help get you in touch with them. Uh, with And as I said, there are people that are way above my pay grade that are able to do a whole lot more than I can. And I know when I'm out of my, out of my depth uh, pretty quickly. I'm a tall guy, but it don't take long for me to get out of my depth. Um, so uh, know that I am always willing to, uh, to hand things over because I know I don't know everything, even though Misty will tell you that I do. Okay? Don't ask her about it. Just take my word for it. Uh, but nevertheless, that's the end of our devotional for tonight on divorce. <laughs>